Cricket presents the warm-up. Hey folks, I'm Neil Beasley and it's football season in Texas once again. Thank goodness, time to get you warmed up. Let's start the season off right by talking about some teams that have a chance to play well into December in the lineup. We'll start in 6A, and would it be cliche to say Duncanville and DeSoto should be the favorites to go to the state championship games? Well, who cares? I'm saying it anyway. Both powerhouses are looking for three-peats in their respective classes, and who am I to say it won't happen? DeSoto is loaded with talent on both sides, with running back Tiger riding prime for another big year, and receivers Daylon Singleton and Booby Feast are looking to control the passing game. Defensively, defensive end Keelan Abrams and his mates will bring the pressure all season long. It will be hard to foresee a path in 6A Division II where DeSoto does not make the state final, but that's why they play the games, right? Their district foes, Duncanville, also stacked. Keelan Russell is coming off just an amazing offseason where he pulled back his SMU commitment and decided Alabama was the place for him. While his stock continues to rise, his wide receiver, DeCorian Moore, is already arguably the top receiver in the nation. The two of them will be a big-time problem for opponents all year. And go ahead and circle October 11th on your calendar. That's the date for the Clash of the Titans, the Panthers and the Eagles. Duncanville may have the harder road in Division I as North Crowley, Allen, Coppell, and Prosper could await. North Crowley has an experienced senior class. They're all coming back. And Coach Marcus Gates ponied up on his non-district schedule. He'll face Lancaster, DeSoto, Rockwall, and Denton Geyer. Yikes. Allen is starting to mold themselves back into the Allen of a couple years ago as they went 9-5 last year and bring back dual-threat quarterback Brady Bricker. Coppell could be unsung in many people's eyes, but the defending district champs have a Baylor commit, Eddie Griffin back behind center, and Weston Polk back at linebacker. Meanwhile, you won't find a more scarier offensive line than the one at Prosper. The kind of experience the Eagles have in the trenches is what coaches dream of. Look for South Lake Carroll to possibly roll into a state semifinal with DeSoto again. The Dragons have yardage gobblers in the backfield with Davis Penn and Riley Wormley. 5A Division I could come down to one very talented district, and that's 3-5A. Alito, Denton Ryan, and Richland are all championship caliber teams, but only one can make it to AT&T Stadium. The Bearcats have running back Racine Gilroy and wide receiver Kadon Finley, while Denton Ryan has ridiculous size on the offensive line, led by Ty Haywood. Richland returns literally every offensive yard gained from a 12-1 team a year ago. That includes running back Michael Turner. Others in Division I to look out for, Highland Park, Lone Star, and Red Oak. As for Division II, South Oak Cliff is hungry to avenge a state title loss to PNG last year, and they got the players to do it. Argyle, Colleyville Heritage, and Melissa will try to find a way to keep them out of the championship game. Looking for favorites in 4A Division I, well, you can try Stephenville, Salina, and Panther Creek, while Brock jumps to 4A Division II and tries to go deep there. And never count out Gunter in 3A. One thing's for sure, North Texas should be well represented at Jerry World come state championship week. Freeflation leaves economists baffled. Getting more for less? It's true for those who switch to Cricket and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. This year on the warm-up, our own Matt Diggs will be giving his picks for some key games each week. Today, the good professor tells us what teams from the Metroplex he thinks will go far on the gridiron. Let's take a look at some of the stories that will be dominating the DFW landscape this season. In 6A, Duncanville and DeSoto are both favorites to three-peat. However, within their own district, I'm going to give the edge to DeSoto right now. I think from 1 to 22, they're a little bit stronger than Duncanville. Duncanville's got the bigger names, but DeSoto, I think, has a little bit more depth. 
Who's going to test Duncanville and DeSoto is going to be one of the big stories. I like North Crowley and South Lake Carroll to repeat as regional favorites to get back to challenge them. And I think both games will be a little bit closer this year, and both teams have an opportunity to get closer to their goal of usurping Duncanville and DeSoto. Who's going to rise up as a dark horse this year? Five teams to keep an eye on. One, Coppell. Edward Griffin is an incredible quarterback, and Coppell has a great defense to give him a little bit of pause if he's not playing perfect. Den Geyer has Kevin Sperry coming back and a very young core of players that you're going to keep an eye on for the next couple of years. Proctor's got the best offensive line in the state, but will they find those skill players to be able to go through those monster holes that the offensive line is going to open up? Forty got a transfer in Nelson Peterson this year to play at quarterback, uh, akin to Adrian Peterson. JV and Osborne is one of the best running backs in the state of Texas and in the nation, so you know Forney is going to be loaded to bear. And you can never count out those Allen Eagles. Brady Bricker is coming back from a team that pushed North Crowley to the absolute brink last year. In 8-6A, I think the most interesting district matchup uh, is going to be Arlington Martin and Arlington Bowie. Who is going to win the district championship? Arlington Martin, by all accounts, had a down year last year. Arlington Bowie pushed them to the limits in district last year, 20-19. to Can Arlington Bowie rise up and surpass Arlington Martin as the leaders of Arlington ISD? Moving to 5A, it all starts and ends with the Alito Bearcats. They are looking to three-peat, but if there's going to be a team that's going to challenge them in the state, it's going to be in their own district. Denton Ryan and Richland are both incredibly loaded this year, and it's going to be a fun district race, and probably those rematches will happen in the regionals to find out who is going to advance to the state semifinals. A lot of people think the team that they will face in the state semifinals will be Highland Park. This is not a top-tier Highland Park team, but how will Highland Park's pet agree fair in a somewhat weaker 5A Division 1 as they've come down from 6A Division 2 and making it to the third round last year. In 5A Division 2, the stories are in the Metroplex because you've got two incredible districts right next to each other. In 3-5A, you've got Argyle, Colleyville Heritage, Mansfield Timberview, Mansfield Summit, and the Colony. Remember last year, the Colony pushed, uh, beat Denton Ryan and pushed several teams in that district to the absolute brink. In 4-5A, you've got defending state champion Anna Coming up to go with the new Todd Dodge looked uh, Lovejoy Leopards, Melissa and Frisco Emerson. Those all all those teams are going to play in the first round. So whoever gets out of that first round has a really good chance of winning the region. And in Region Two, you've got South Oak Cliff, and now you've got their state rivals in Port Natchez Grove in the same region. It's going to be incredible competition, and we may see one of those teams, but maybe even both of those teams, not even make it out of that region with teams like Huntsville, uh, who are rising up in Region 2. In small schools, Frisco Panther Creek has the best chance for Frisco ISD in a long while uh, to compete for a state championship, especially as well as they played Anna last year and Anna moving up to 5A Division 1. Keep an eye out on Frisco Panther Creek. Jalen Lott transferred over from Lovejoy and has uh, it has increased uh, the capacity and the talent over there. A couple of teams to watch out for in small schools. Uh, you got Brock moving up from 4A, uh, from 3A Division One to 4A Division Two, and Toller moving up from 2A Division One to 3A Division Two. Two teams to keep an eye on in the smaller schools in DFW. I'm the professor Matt Diggs for DFW Inside High School Sports. We caught up with a big time athlete from the football field in this week's recruiting trail. Taz, what are you looking for in, into a college? Like, what, what are some things that, that you look for into a college? Uh, I would say trust. Trust goes a long way. Um, I would say production. If we're going to talk about football, first start mm -hmm. football, uh, production, obviously. Uh, scheme, where you're fitting at. Uh, and then what I look for in the school, obviously, the academics. Um, and just how I feel when I'm on the campus. The campus feel like I see myself actually staying here, living here without football. And how do you want to fit into a program on and off the field? I know you mentioned the ac academic yeah. well, but how do you want to fit into a college program? So let's say you come in in the spring, you know, a lot of people coming in in the spring or even during fall camp. How do you want to fit into a, a college program? Uh, on the field, obviously, I want to fit in with everybody. I want to be up to par. I want to feel like it's a big drop off from them to me. So I want to come in, uh, I already feel like I'm a little season, not season, but I have it, like skill, I have uh, knowledge under my belt. When I get to college, they're gonna put more skill, weight, speed, and more knowledge under my belt. So I feel like just with that coming in early and uh, with that January, 
I feel like I'll be perfectly fine. I'll be able to adapt and just adapt to the college life. Yeah, so who is Taz Williams Jr.? Uh, on the field, um, I was a play receiver. Uh, it's a receiver that can run past you, by you, through you. Um, on the field, I like to play a lot. If you watch my film, uh, I like to play around a lot. I like to play with the corners. No diddy, like, I like to play around with them. Uh, play jokes. Just I just have fun out there. So I'm always going to have fun, make sure. I'm having fun, make sure everybody else is having fun. That's something I like to do, just just bring the joy to everybody. Uh, what do you want Baylor fans to know about you? Uh, that I'm a great person. And obviously, I see with the football, I'm a great recruiter. I've been doing what I told you I was going to do. And I'm just ready to get it started. What are some things you're looking to accomplish before you graduate? It can be in the classroom, it could be mm -hmm. on the field accolades. So what are some things you're looking to accomplish before you graduate? Uh, I'll start with the classroom. I would say I want to finish with all A's. That's been my goal for a minute. Since sophomore year, freshman year, I ain't gonna lie everybody. I ain't gonna lie about everybody BS they freshman year. Yeah. So sure. sophomore year, junior, senior, I, I shot for straight A's. So that's my goal against straight A's. Uh, to bring my GK up. Um, that's really my main goal for the classroom. And then on the field, uh, I was going to win a state championship with my guys so last year. And I just want to break all the school records that I can and just have fun. It's my last ride. So I just want to have as much fun as possible. What is the legacy do you want to leave as you're preparing for your next phase in your career? I was always for the people. Uh, I'm not very selfish. I'm not selfish at all. Um, I'm always for the people. I want to make sure everybody around me eats. Just to make sure everybody else around me gets what they deserve. Um, I'm always, I try to give to the community. Uh, that's one thing I'm gonna do when I get to college. Uh, I'll make sure I invest my money right. And also, I uh, want to give back to the homeless. Um, I just want to do stuff for the less fortunate to make sure I give, I give back to the people that's in need. Cricket Wireless has an offer that's going to blow up your group chat. Four lines for only $25 per month each with Nationwide 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Our producer, Ward Fussold, sat down with a head coach from North Texas to get his thoughts on the upcoming season in this week's Media Day segment. All right, thanks, Neil. We are joined with Chad Reeves from Arlington Martin. And, Coach, when you look at the Martin Warriors, they've – Pretty much been the cream of the crop in the Arlington ISD. I know you don't want to hear about the past. You want to look at the future. But to keep yourself on top, there is teams in 86A that are really gunning for that number one spot. And the one I think about most is, is Bowie because they have so much talent on the offensive side of the ball. How are you guys – what do you have on your team that's going to keep you at the top uh, and, and pulling down yet another district title? Well, we actually got lucky to escape Bowie a year ago. And uh, – what we have is is what you mentioned is the tradition. We've won the last five district championships. We haven't lost a, a district game. And and what that does is it it makes everybody uh, circle us on their calendar. Uh, and and it's not lost on our kids though, uh, the teams that have come before them and what they've been able to do. And they don't want to be the ones to 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 end the streak. To get you guys toughened for the playoffs as usual. You got yourself a nice non-district schedule, for, especially those first two games with Lake Travis and Denton Guyron. I believe you're traveling to both of those. So talk to me about that non-district schedule and what you hope it, it gets you guys ready for H6A. Yeah, luckily, uh, even before we even before we tangle with them, we get the Trinity Trojans this week on uh, for our scrimmage. And so oh, wow. uh, the first three, four weeks in Mansfield, we play Mansfield too, and they have a solid team. And, uh, you know, We've we've done that around here at Martin for forever. We've we've scheduled the the best of the best in an effort to get our kids prepared for for uh, what it's going to be like in district, and then even even more so what the what the playoff atmosphere will be like and the competition that you're going to face. I'm going to start with the dude that I just love shooting highlights for, and that's Jesse Ford. The the man is a beast on the defensive line. Heck, I even hear Dick saying, "Hey, I heard he's being compared to Miles Garrett." I was like, "Well, all right, well let's slow it down a little bit," but. Then you look at the tape and you can see why. Talk to me about how good he could possibly be. He's a he's a junior now. He's still got two more years to go here. Uh, he he uh, he can be as good as he wants. And the great thing about Jesse is not only is he a good football player, he's an even better kid. Uh, he's an even harder worker than that in the weight room on the field. Uh, you you won't find anybody like he. 
he doesn't just just talk it he walks it in and in every sense of the word and and the, the he just seems to continue to grow he is a monster and and he's been that way since i've known him since he was in kindergarten and it used to be like this and right. you think people are going to catch up to him but it doesn't he just keeps growing and uh we're going to utilize his skills we're going to utilize him uh, obviously he played all defense last year but uh we'd be crazy not to 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 let him get on the offensive side. He is extremely skilled athlete uh, and we're going to take full use of his talents. It's going to be cool. We starting this thing up next week, coach. Good luck on your travels down to Lake Travis. Get yourself a nice movie to watch on the bus and uh, we will talk to you soon. Hey, I appreciate it. Hey, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks for joining us. We leave you with Professor Diggs DFW rankings. Hope you're ready for some football. I know I am.